you find yourself down in the keys enjoying the beautiful scenery but get the urge to do a little fishing but don't want to pay the full price of a charter well you're in luck with 42 bridges located throughout the keys there are plenty of opportunity for to get on some fish for the land-based angler in this video i'm going to show you the basics of how to catch a fish on any of the bridges throughout the keys and what you'll need to do it hey guys All right, before you go out there, you wanna have everything set up. And for this video, for the whole video, we're gonna be using a Carolina rig. And what I've got going on here is 50 pound braid coming down to a swivel. I've got a one and a half ounce lead sinker right here where it can free float. Um, you don't have to use braid. You can use mono, um, whatever you prefer. 25 pounds or more. This is 50 pound braid. Anyways, once I get in my swivel, I've got a 30 pound fluorocarbon. I've got a five foot leader. This is a straight leader going all the way out. And I got it down to a hook right here. And this is pretty much what I've got going on here. Kind of experimented with some hooks. Um, I used two aught in these, but this is three aught, but that's one example. And I was messing around with a drop shot hook. If you're a bass fisherman, you'll probably have these. Um, I had one aught, I'd probably bump up to a two aught. Uh, you can also use circle hooks. These are the swivels I was using. And this is a leader material I was using. I was using fluorocarbon. Um, and that's pretty much a simple setup. All right, for your rod setup, you're gonna kinda want a surf style or inshore style rod. Um, I really like to use a seven foot six to eight foot medium heavy to heavy action rod. And for the reel, if you don't have a bait clicker and you gotta use a spinning reel. I would go with a 5,000 or bigger size spinning reel. Um, you never know what you're gonna catch up there, so you definitely want something that holds a lot of line and you want something you can put the drag on and torque them in if need be. This next step is optional, but I highly recommend buying some chum. Uh, chum definitely increases your odds of attracting fish, and you basically all you do is put it inside of a bag and let it float in the water, and as it melts, some of the chum floats through the water and attracts fish. According to how fast the current is flowing, it will determine where I put my chum at, but if it's flowing really hard, I'll put it behind a bridge pylon. If it's flowing at a moderate speed, I'll just put it in the current itself. Help me! When you get your shrimp, you're going to run your hook in the very back section of its tail. I like to go in between the last and the second to last section. I'll go through the bottom and up through the middle. This will allow the shrimp to be more streamlined in the current and it'll give it a natural effect. I also like using the J hooks because of the length of the shaft. It prevented fish from biting directly onto the fluorocarbon. I felt like that helped out a lot in landing fish. Whenever you cast down off the bridge, you want to take note of where the current is going. You want to throw down current with your shrimp. This sucker took off. You got him on that one too? Good deal. This guy's some weight right here. Ah, uh, I say that. He ain't got no weight. Mutton coming over. Porgy and a mutton. That was cool. I was sitting there messing with that rod and then this one just took off. Good thing you're here. All right, so whenever we have our bait in the water, we've got a rod leaning against the railing on the bridge. 
Um, you're pretty much going to leave your drag really loose if you don't have a bait clicker. I know some Shimano reels have an option on the spinning reels where you can click it, but if you just have a basic spinning reel like this pin here, um, you're going to leave your drag extremely loose if you're not going to hold it. So I'll leave it really loose. My rod will be leaning against the bridge or I can just pull it out really easy. And you'll kind of notice that when a fish hits it, he's either gonna your rod's gonna tip over a few times, or your reel is gonna immediately start screaming. When that happens, I usually run up to it. I'll pick the rod up and just tighten down the drag, but I don't want to tighten it down where I can't. I don't have any drag. I want to have like just enough, you know, to fight this fish in. Um, depending on how the fish is fighting, you'll need to adjust your drag accordingly. But you don't want to just run up and torque this down where it's so tight that it just breaks the line. You want to torque, just tighten it down just enough where you can still have the fish can, you can still play the fish the whole time. And that's kind of with uh, experience. There we go. <laughs> that's so fun. Here's one of those little forks. I noticed a lot of people threw these porgies back as bycatch, but they're an unregulated species and they taste absolutely delicious. I highly recommend keeping them. Big old mangrove a second ago. Good for the bridge. Only gotta be 10 to keep. It's only 13 and a half. Definitely the most important thing you need to consider before going out on the bridge is learning the regulations, keeping a ruler with you, because you definitely do not want to get caught with a fish you cannot keep. Definitely the coolest part about fishing on a Keys Bridge is not knowing what you're going to catch. Everything on the end of your line is always going to be a mystery and keeps the day exciting and fun.